The World Health Organization has warned that millions of people in Ukraine face a life-threatening winter because of Russia's destruction of the energy grid. During a visit to Kiev, the WHO's Europe director, Hans Kluge, said the health system faced a formidable challenge in coping with energy shortages, a mental health crisis and the risk of viral infections. Half of Ukraine's energy infrastructure is either damaged or destroyed. This is already having knock-on effects on the health system and on the people's health. Put simply, this winter will be about survival. We expect two to three million more people to leave their homes in search of warmth and safety. The United States envoy in war crimes has said she's monitoring allegations that Ukrainian troops have committed human rights abuses. Beth Van Schack said the laws of war applied to all parties equally. But she added that the scale of Russia's criminality in the conflict was enormous compared with that of Ukraine. Rescue workers in Indonesia are working through the night in the search for survivors of an earthquake. More than 160 people were killed by the quake in West Java province. The governor said he believed many people were still under the rubble. The BBC's Valja Baraputri is at a regional hospital in Chianjur. The situation here is very busy and harrowing at the same time. There are a row of emergency tents outside of the hospital building. Hundreds of people, children, adults, old people are being taken care of with minimal lighting. However, I see that medical and rescue workers here work around the clock. They are treating people on the spot. Ambulances are coming and going non-stop to pick up and deliver people. However, many are still trapped. The first full day of matches at the Football World Cup in Qatar has come to a close. The final game was a one all draw between Wales and the United States. The Welsh equalised in the second half in what was their first appearance at the tournament since the 1950s. And England... England thrashed Iran 6-2. The entire Iranian team stayed silent during the national anthem to show support for anti-government protests at home. A former Iranian international player, Dariush Yazdani, spoke to the BBC. The football is not our priority right now. People are fighting and the regime, they murdered a lot of people in the past 40, 45 days. I'm not saying it's the right thing. All I want to say is we are supporting our people. This team is Islamic regime's team. It's not our team. It's not our national team. Nigerian officials say gunmen have kidnapped at least 130 people in a series of attacks in the northwest of the country. Reports suggest women and children were among those taken in Zamfara State. The mass kidnappings happened over the weekend when armed men and motorbikes raided several villages. The military rulers in Mali have banned all non-governmental organisations that are funded or supported by France from operating in the country. Humanitarian groups are included in the ban. In a statement, the junta said the move followed a decision by France to stop development aid in response to Bamako's alleged use of paramilitaries from the Russian Wagner Group. The EU's foreign policy chief, Josep Borrell, has warned that violence could erupt following the failure of talks to resolve a dispute between Kosovo and Serbia over vehicle number plates. The authorities in Kosovo want local ethnic Serbs to surrender their Serbian-issued licence plates. Our Balkans correspondent, Guy Deloni, reports. Kosovo's authorities have confirmed the police will issue fines of €150 to holders of Serbian-issued licence plates, starting with the morning shift. That's despite a request from the EU foreign policy chief Josep Borrell to rescind the measure. It's not clear how Kosovo Serbs will respond. Serbia's president, Aleksandr Vucic, has warned of hell on the ground if Kosovo's special police attempt to enforce the fines. NASA's Artemis space capsule Orion has reached the moon five days after leaving Earth. The unmanned vehicle orbited around the far side of the moon, flying within 130 kilometres of the lunar surface. As it re-emerged, controllers in Houston confirmed that a critical engine burn had been successful. This has put Orion into a wider orbit, where it will conduct a series of manoeuvres.
Hi, thank you for watching. I hope the videos are useful for you. Please subscribe to my channel using the button below.